section because it's really written about us. So this is kind of the story of why it happened. Um, starting at the beginning, Lindsey Buckingham lived in San Francisco his whole life. Um, my family during our high school years was living in Los Angeles and we got transferred up to San Francisco. So I met Lindsey in my senior year and he was a junior. And I saw him um, one time and we sang a song together at a party and then I never saw him again. I know. I know. So anyway, two years later, at the end of my second year in junior college, I get a call from a guy named Bob. And Bob was the drummer in a band that Lindsay was in. But I didn't really know that. He just said, hi, my name is Bob, and I have this great band. And I was wondering, we were wondering if you'd like to join our band. So I said, well, yeah, why not? What kind of band is it? He said, it's a really hard rock and roll San Francisco band and we were living in the middle of San Francisco in the most amazing time for artists and musicians in the whole world ever between 65 and 70. So we, so I joined the band. Lindsay lived right down the street from me, unbeknownst to me. So we went into practice, we practiced four days a week, this is like a lot of work. And we turned into really a great band and we were opening for big bands like Jimi Hendrix, 75,000 people. Janis Joplin, at least 30,000 people. Um, Santana, right before the movie Woodstock came out, a week before, thousands and thousands of people. Um, and then my last band that I'll tell you about was uh, we were stuck in Lodi with Creedence Clearwater. For real, we opened for them, but we were also stuck in Lodi with them because our car broke down. So we were doing really well. That's where we actually learned to do what we do here on stage now. And so um, we were, I was, I got to keep this extra money. My mom didn't take it from me. And so I saved up my money and I heard this rumor about this little store in downtown San Francisco called the Velvet Underground. And it was a store that where all the famous rock and roll women went and bought their clothes. So I thought, well, I'm gonna go up there. So I got my little candy apple red Corvair Monza Spider five speed convertible and zipped up there. And I found the store and I went in and I was like, stunned at the tidiness of this store and the beauty of the painted, the hand-painted floor and realizing I was not going to be able to afford anything in this store. But I was standing on this beautiful floor in the same place I was pretty sure that Janis Joplin and Grace Slick and probably many more famous women that in my blank, blankness couldn't even, didn't even know had stood before thinking to, myself, to their selves, what am I going to get today? So I thought, well, I'm having a premonition, and I feel like a little I just bit better. saw the future, and all of a sudden I thought, you know what, I can't buy anything today, but I am going to be able to come back to this store and buy anything I want. And I really believed it. So I left, but I walked out of that store, the Velvet Underground, a completely different woman. And I knew that things were going to be looking up soon. The reason I'm telling you this story is because I, especially in today's insane and crazy world, want you to know that if you have a dream and you have the passion for it and you're willing to work hard, you can have that dream. Don't ever let anybody get in your way and tell you you can't do something. Because that is crap. You can. You can do anything that you put your mind to. We were just a bunch of kids that were like, you know, sailing along on the we hope we make it train. And we did. And we're here tonight. So we are living proof. So I'm back to the Velvet Underground, back to the floor that I love, back to a room with some lace and some paper flowers, back to the gypsy that I was.